Hi guys, welcome, welcome back to my channel. This is me, Alicia. If this is your first time here, and if not, welcome back. All right, so if you've watched my video, I posted a couple of weeks ago. It's about my different streams of income. I had five different streams of income. I was not expecting for that video to do the numbers that it did, and it has. And so while I wasn't expecting that, I'm definitely grateful because now it's allowed me to open up my channel to a couple of different other things to talk about. One being um, like entrepreneur, small business stuff. Another one being finance. So my goal is to at least put out one of those videos for you once a month whether it's a finance video personal finance or an entrepreneur small business video that's my goal to do that at least once a month so you guys hold me accountable so before we get into today's video which is a personal finance let's do a quick round robin because I always get asked about what I'm wearing I put everything in the description box but I just want to just do a quick round robin and then we'll get into today's video all right so starting from the top my hair is from kinkistry it's their kinknesis bundles is the only straight kinky hair that she has i have a regular basic sew-in um and 14 inches majestic salon if you're in birmingham i'll link it below guys if you're not familiar with the description box there's like a little black arrow here if you're watching it on your phone or on your computer there's like a little black arrow here if you're watching it on the tv I don't know because I don't really watch YouTube on TV, but there's a little arrow here and it has all of the details of what I'm wearing as well as some links. So that's my hair. My lip is Milani. It's a devotion. It is completely discontinued, but you might be able to get some on Amazon. All of my jewelry is from my collection, the Shop Live and Fearless collection, gold filled, um, tarnish free, sweat free, proof, sweat proof, waterproof. Um, and then of course my shirt is a Kalana Barfield slash target collection is their future collective absolutely love this some people are wearing it as like a crisscross dress she ain't got that kind of time i've just been wearing it as like a normal like oversized button-up shirt dress and it's worked for me i think that's it yes let's get into today's video all right so today's video is going to be a personal finance i got a lot of personal finance how do you budget how do you manage and all that kind of stuff and what i will say is that these five streams of revenue came gradually when I first let came out of college first graduated I had your standard entry-level job and what I think it helped is that I because I was able to budget my money back when I was broke or struggling or living paycheck to paycheck it's allowed me to better budget my money now some of the tips I got just from reading articles online looking at books some of the tips I got from uh, my professor in finance but it's just basically five I call them commandments, but it's just basically five, I'm going to say commandments, five commandments that I use to get my finances in order. So I'm going to put the tip right here. And like I said, these videos are just a way for me to like brain dump my, when did I graduate? 2010? Has it been 12 years? My God, I'm out of shit. Anyway, so I'm going to put my 12 years of knowledge for you guys. So without further ado, let's get into today's first tip, which is create a budget and stick with it. Some people think that a budget has to be this very extravagant Excel document where one tab links to another one or this, you know, complicated spreadsheet, this complicated word file. It's really not that hard it can be complicated because mine is complicated as as it should be i'm dealing with five streams of income but for a simple budget if you have a nine to five or if you have a nine to five and a side hustle or if you have just a side hustle side hustle creating a budget is not as complicated as it seems you have your expenses you have your income your goal is to always have more income than your expenses. If there are situations where your expenses are more than your income, then you need to reevaluate how much money you're spending on your expenses so you're not in the red. Cheaper rent, have a roommate, quit ordering DoorDash, go to Aldi instead of Target, all the different things you can do to reduce your expenses, but that's mainly, that's basically the goal, is to have your income higher than your overall expenses, because then you can use that leftover to then invest, or put towards a insurance, you know, life insurance or something like that. So creating a budget and stick with it. What I will say is when I first started out, and I created a budget, mine was very simple. Mine was in Excel because if you work in finance or if you work in accounting, Excel, I don't care what industry you're in, retail, finance, 
IT, healthcare, most accounting and finance professionals are going to live in Excel. It's just the way that it works. So it didn't have to be it didn't have to be complicated. You put your income at the top, your monthly income or how often you get paid, and then you list all of your expenses, whether that's housing or food or gas or phone, and you have to list absolutely everything. That afterpay, I need you to list that, okay? Those are firm payments. Zale, you list absolutely everything, and then that determines whether you're in the red or in the black. If you're in the black, that's great. Can you be in the black a little bit more? If you're in the red, now you need to reevaluate some of your expenses because if you're in the red, that means you're constantly going to be struggling for the next paycheck and that to me that's where you have these payday loan places these title loan places these credit cards that have these absorbent interest rates because you're basically borrowing from peter to pay paul until you get your paycheck so whether that's you're going to the payday loan place astronomical interest rate title loan your loan titling your car interest rate or you're putting some expenses on a credit card that you know you don't have the ability to pay in full because you're operating in the red so you're putting it on a credit card paying a little here paying a little there giving the credit card company all this extra money in interest credit cards are great i live for a credit card but if you don't know how to properly finagle the credit card company and you're just putting money on putting car expenses on there because you can't afford them in cash don't do that. Also, this has nothing to do with my five tips, but just a just a tip that one of my finance professors gave me. If you can't afford to pay for it in cash, don't put it on a credit card. He gave me that. That's not something that I that's not one of like my five commandments. Um, although it should be, I probably should have six, but he told me that very clearly back when I was in a lot of credit card trouble in college. He said if you can't afford to pay for it in cash, don't put it on a credit card. So while we are creating a budget, like I said, the overall goal, and this is finance tip number two, is to live below your income means. And that's basically just making sure that you're operating in black. Um, there were, especially fresh out of college, there was a lot of things that I wanted to do. There's a lot of things I wanted to get. There was a lot of things I wanted to buy, but I knew that I had to continue to operate in the black and live within my income means. And what that means for me, and this is also a tip that one of my finance professors gave me, is let's just say, for example, I graduated college and I was making $55,000 a year, right? I'm operating in black at $55,000 a year. I'm, I'm saving a little bit. I, you know, getting my bills taken care of. I got a little bit left over in case for emergencies, all that kind of stuff. What happens is that the next year, right, if I get a three or a 4% raise, instead of increasing my expenses, what you do is you take that three to 4% and you invest it. Can, does your company match? Can you then go up on your 401k? Can you start a, Roth IRA do you have insurance like life insurance can you then go out and get a life insurance policy because if you've been living comfortably at 55 or 50,000 what an example I get 50,000 if you've been living comfortably at 50,000 then now that you have it in a raise that doesn't mean you then go and increase your expenses that means maybe you take that raise increase and move it to basically set yourself up like i was saying five or ten or twenty years from now can you take that extra money and just put it straight into a savings account can you take that extra money increase your roth ira increase your 401k go out and get a life insurance policy it's those different investments that can set you up five or ten or twenty years from now and if you were never looking forward to the raise in the first place which you shouldn't have been because you were operating in the black it's basically money that you don't see until you actually need it, i.e. retirement. And it's um, it's sad to see every time. And I don't know, I guess I don't know their story, but it's sad when I go into a Walmart or I go just to, like to a restaurant and I see all these older, older people like 60s and 70s and they're working. And part of me is like, I want to ask them, are you working because you want to work and you want to get out? Or are you working because you just did not save for retirement? And a lot of people are in my situation where my mom was a baby boomer. So you had all these baby boomers that are now set to be on the age of retirement and some of them can and live comfortably some of them can't and have to go to work and then you have my situation where some of them can't so the burden then falls on their children i'm blessed to be in a situation where i can help my mom financially but i really don't know what would happen if i wasn't in the situation that i was in now to be able to help my mom financially and that's just something that you know, now that Alexander is here, I never want my kid to have to be responsible for me financially. That was one of the main things, which is like, I want to be able to 
retire and tell my kid, hey, we're retiring, me and daddy are retiring, we're going here, we're going here, and not for him to have to worry about taking an extra job or working overtime to be able to support his parents in retirement. So that's one of the main things when you live below your income and you get extra income, you can then use that to set yourself up so your kids aren't having to bear the burden of your retirement. All right, so while we are on the live below your means, the third one that I have is to pay yourself first. And what I what that means is you need a savings. You need a savings account. There are a lot of finance professionals out there. There's one major one that says, hey, you need to save a thousand dollars before you start paying off debt. Um, and we all know who I'm talking about. And that is great. I just want you to start somewhere. I personally think that now in today's age, full of inflation and the market is here and the market is there and job security might or might not be here. I would, my goal for myself was to have at least three months of expenses, 90 days. So in case something happens, the bottom falls out, I go in tomorrow and I'm fired or I go in tomorrow and someone pisses me off so bad that I quit, I have 90 days to get another job and I don't have to worry or stress about how my, my bills are going to be paid. But I definitely think that you need a savings account and that is basically paying yourself first. And so what happens is that you do that in your budget. So you list the necessities of your expenses. You list your housing, your transportation, your food, your utilities, okay? Those are your essentials. And then after that, then you consider paying yourself first and essential. Before you talk about, oh, I need money for, fo uh, for uh, food or slash DoorDash, oh, I need money to shop, oh, I need money to go out with girls, I need money to travel, all of that, that's stuff that you can live without, okay? Food. Transportation. When I mean food, I mean like to survive. I'm not talking about door dashing or Taco Tuesday or Wing Wednesday. I'm talking about like essentials, bread and wa <laughs> bread and water, right? You got food, housing, transportation, your utilities, paying yourself first. These are these are musts. And then over here, these are things like oh, there's extra in the budget. Okay, DoorDash, tr maybe traveling, uh, a little little clothing things over here that can give live without so if you have your income and all of these add up and you're in and you're barely in the black then some of these gotta go okay you see what i'm saying so that's what i mean when you say paying yourself first consider paying yourself first an essential right not a want because then that makes it automatic i personally have my savings automated so i have direct deposit i set up where x number goes in my savings account i don't even want to see it i don't even want to know what's there and then the rest of it goes to my checking and that's what i use to budget the rest of my other expenses paying yourself first is absolutely essential especially if you're single um if you are single and you don't have someone to fall back on whether that's a spouse or a partner or a life mate you need to be able to set yourself up because you just never know car engine falls out of the car ceiling collapses in your house medical emergency and you need to get somewhere fast you just never know what can happen and cash is one of those things where you can feel a lot better knowing that if should an emergency happen i don't have to go to a payday loan place a title loan place a credit card that i'm not able to pay off you can have the security of knowing that i'm secure and i'm okay should an emergency happen pay yourself first all right next up is just all about like i said paying yourself first making sure that you are um protected in case of an emergency is basically stay ready so you don't have to get ready and that was one of the things that one of my professors told me and i didn't understand what he meant until later in life let me let me explain when i was in college and my car broke down like it was i want to say the transmission transmission went out now mind you i'm a college student right and i did not have my finances in order not only did i have my finances in order i didn't have my uh credit in order so when it came time for me to get a car i'm like i'm struggling i'm going back and forth all like it was the most stress as if as if college isn't already stressful it was the most stressful time in my life luckily i had a family friend who was able to allow me a loan to be able to go out and buy a car and then i was able to pay that person back monthly um, because they literally went to the bank was able to get along with no issues bam handed me a check for eleven thousand dollars it was like here go get a car and if that person wasn't around i literally don't know what i would have done 
but it was crazy because after that happened i'm like man she really went in one day and was able to get a loan for eleven thousand dollars and i was talking to my professor about it because i like my professor he probably i probably got on his nerves i was going for office hours and i was talking about nothing related to i'm talking about like personal finance stuff and so he was like, yeah, she stayed ready so she didn't have to get ready. I was like, what are you talking about? He's like, some people think that that's like in sports and that's great, but it also can mean finances as in like her credit was already in order. She didn't have to worry about getting her credit together to go out and get a loan. She probably had the income to go and she probably could have went in to her savings account, pulled out 11 grand and gave it to me, but she wanted to teach me the value of paying a loan back. So she had the income or the, the money should, should she need it to. And it hit me when uh, COVID 2020, I'm driving my car because I don't know if you guys know me, but I will drive a car until the engine falls out, right? So I'm driving a car. Um, my mom's car goes out. It's in the middle of COVID. It's like, I want to say August of 2020. Anybody driving? I don't know why my mom is driving. No, no one's going anywhere. It's the middle of COVID. My mom's car goes out. I know, like I said before, my mom doesn't really have the finances to be able to go out and just get a car tomorrow. So I was like, all right, mom, I'm going to give you my car. I'm going to get another car. When I tell you that this was the easiest car buying process because my credit was in order. I had the money should I needed to, to get a down payment. Everything was just, it was, it was the breeziest car buying process I have ever been a part of and been around. And mind you, I have, two other sisters and I have a mother and I have a husband. We have been in the car buying process. This was smooth because I didn't have to worry about it. When it came time for me to apply to get a, a car, went online, went through my credit card company, was able to get a car, no problem, sent that pre-approval to my dealership. They were able to go ahead and order the car. The car shipped. I picked up the car. I was at the dealership for probably less than 15 minutes and most of that was them cleaning my car. Stay ready so I don't have to get ready. Your credit, stay ready so you don't have to get ready. Your your savings account, stay ready so you don't have to get ready. So that when an expense happens or when a catastrophe happens, you already have the income. If your engine falls out of your car on Monday, you can go get a car on Wednesday or Thursday without no issues because your credit is already where you need to be. Your income is already where you need to be. When me and William found out that we were expecting a child in December, we had no intentions on buying a house this year. None whatsoever. Our goal, honestly, was to get to Florida eventually, was to buy a house in Florida and to move to the coast. Um, getting a bigger house in Birmingham was never on the cards, but we got pregnant, right? And we're like, okay, while we love the house that we were in, we knew it was entirely too small. And so we immediately started the process. Hey, contacted our realtor, went ahead and got the pre-approval process. We didn't have to go through the whole rigmarole of getting credit in order, paying down debt, paying off collections. What's on my credit report now? What's on my credit report then? Where are we going to get the down payment? All of that stuff was already in order. We were already proactive to it. So that way when it came time for us to get a house it wasn't this long drawn out process of i need to fix this and i need to fix that i need to fix that it was already done does it take a while to get there yes i am not telling you guys that at in 20 or in two years you need to have your shit together no what i'm saying is that these are definitely tips and building blocks that you can build on to get to where you need to be i did not have my ish together after college three years after college it definitely took a while for me to get to where i am now but i definitely think that this video can help you create like a guideline or a stepping stone to get there so that's the fourth one stay ready so you don't have to get ready all right so the last one which has really really helped me um because i used to um i was a big shopper and i was one of those i I was one of those when I first, not really when I first started out influencing, but as I got into, as I transitioned, for those that don't know, if you haven't been around that long, I used to be a natural hair blogger slash influencer. If you keep scrolling back on YouTube, you see a lot of natural hair videos. So that's where I started out at. It came a point where I'm just like, if I keep doing these natural hair videos, I'm going to break my hair out because I can't keep doing videos like two or three times a week it was a mess so then i moved over to like lifestyle and you just lifestyle is when you're posting like full pictures and so i 
made the mistake of you doing a lot of shopping. I've got to do this. I've got to get this. I've got to get this outfit. I can't wear this outfit twice. I can't see Instagram can't see this outfit twice. And so I was buying a lot of stuff and I was buying a lot of stuff at night. Right. And so I did that because I remembered my credit card and I was like, I could rattle off my credit card. I had like two different credit cards. I could rattle them off with no issues was I still paying the balance off in full at the end of the month yes so it wasn't it wasn't like I was operating in the red but when I turned and looked at my expenses I was like my god Alicia this is a lot of money for some Hennes and Maritz this is a lot and so I called the companies and said hey I lost my car I need a new one so you do that they send you a new card number I made it adamant to not remember my card number it, it doesn't seem like a lot, but if you can remember, if you can remember to rattle off a credit card at night, listen, it's a lot. So I do not remember my credit card. It may not seem like a lot, but if you can, if you can rattle me, if you are watching this video and you can rattle off a credit card or a debit card number, I'm going to need you to log on right now and call it lost and get it re and get it redone because you should not remember that it's it's not good especially late at night when you're scrolling instagram or you're scrolling tiktok and you see it you're like oh that's cute and then you swipe up and then you start adding in your credit card information don't do it because that's how you get messed up that's don't do that okay Let's get you in a world get you in a world of trouble so that might only been it might have only been for me now i know some people still use paypal and you can log in through paypal and that's great but i felt like when i was going back looking at my expenses i was using my credit card entirely too often than using paypal like i feel like paypal gives you that extra set like paypal like you got to sign into paypal you got to figure out which method paypal is going to ask you to confirm and you got to go back to the website and then confirm your order i feel like taking all of those steps i'm like i ain't taking, i know i don't i don't really want these jeans but just being able to do -do 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 -do, zip code do -do -do -do, confirm order like that was too easy i was like there was there was no steps to that so even though i do use paypal i feel like credit card gave me it was too easy for me to be like complete purchase paypal yes yes confirm yeah like it was too much and it was it, it gave me time for me to be like alicia you do not need that suit this late at night go to bed credit cards so just don't do it if you know them by heart call right now lost get a new one and don't remember it you shouldn't you should even remember it don't don't do that to yourself Help yourself out, especially if you're one of those late night shoppers that I do. And if you are easily influenced by TikToks and Instagram reels, don't do it. Cancel it. Get up. All right, so guys, that is it. Like I said, these are just some, I literally keep them on my phone. I would turn my phone around, but there's a bunch of other finance stuff I don't need need you guys to see but i literally keep them on my phone and they're just basically some commandments that i use to live basically keep and manage my finances keep and manage my spending in order like i said take one take two take all five whatever you need to do to get and keep your finances i definitely think that uh as a black community that's not really talked about a lot and if i me little old me can help spread a little bit finance knowledge to the youtube community i am happy to do so so with all that being said go ahead and like comment and subscribe and i'm gonna catch you guys next sunday seven o'clock later